Probably the best known Phantom spin off book is Susan Kay's Phantom, which deals with his early childhood right up to his life in the Opera House. Some people love it, others hate it. I'm leaning more towards loving it, particularly the first half of the book. It's split up into different sections, each dealing with a different phase of Eric's life and told from different point of views. For instance, the first section deals with Eric's mother, Madeline. This is probably my favourite part of the book because it gives chilling details of how eerily gifted Eric is, even at an early age. I love the scene where Eric's lying in his little baby basket and uh, striking the bells that are hanging over him to create a tune. The uh, novel goes on to explain some of his genius, how he learned so much about architecture, music, ventriloquism and illusion. The only problem I have with this part is that it's told from the point of view of Madeline, and that character just isn't nice. We know from LaRue that Eric's mother never showed him any affection, never kissed him, but uh, the book never really goes into great details as to why, beyond the fact that Madeline is a spoiled brat who doesn't know how to cope. I mean, on one hand, she nurtures his genius in any way that he can, yet she can't even bring herself to kiss him or look at him. What's her problem? He's your son, he has a deformity, get over it! It's not that she's just a product of the times, either, since other people meet Eric and manage to be civil with him, looking past his deformity, so why can't she? Also, her descent into madness is a bit too fast for me, so much so that I, I just didn't buy into it. But other than that, the phantomy goodness fairly overflowed from the pages, and I can totally accept this as what really happened to it. Anyway, the second section is told from Eric's point of view, and explains how he ends up being captured by gypsies and put in a cage to display at travelling fairs. I particularly like Eric's descriptions of life on display. Increasingly, I cease to feel that I belong to what is loosely termed the human race. It's as though I had tumbled onto some alien planet where I found myself unable to take revenge upon my tormentors, except in the dark prison of my mind. There, in that uniquely private domain where I was free of chains, I conjured up a thousand horrible deaths for those who came to prod and stare. I learned to live almost entirely in my mind creating a landscape of my own, and peopling it with the devices of my captive imagination. My world was strange, beautiful, an entirely new dimension where music and magic held sway. It was a second Eden, where I alone was God, and at times I retreated so far into it that I became indeed a living corpse, comatose and trance-like. Anyway, Eric's new owner is a sure man called Javert. And time stop it! No, 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 not that one. Um, anyway, this Javert takes a fancy to Eric and tries to rape him. Now, that's a bit weird right there, isn't it? I mean, it just seems totally out of place. Like, I know child abuse probably did go on back in those days, but it never seems to make it into any classic literature that I've ever read. <sighs> yeah, so anyway, just like the movie version, Eric kills his master and escapes. And it's on to Rome, where Eric becomes an apprentice to a master stonemason, and where he sort of falls in love with this spoiled brat. Of course, it all ends in tragedy, and Eric is once again on the run. The next part of the story follows the Persian, who is actually given a name in this one, Nadir, or Nadir, whatever. Nadir is sent to Russia to bring Eric back to perform his little magic tricks for the Shah and the Khanum of Persia. I really enjoyed this part of the book, but I felt it was a little weird in places. That, that may be because fandom has a very European sort of feel to it, so it seemed a bit out of context having him in Persia with all its unique customs and terminology. It'd be a bit like having a Fagin prequel where he learns to steal in Kenya, just not quite the same. Anyway, Nadir disobeys his orders to kill Eric and lets him escape to Europe, where the next part of the book follows his life in Paris, where he gets a chance to work with Charles Garnier on the Paris Opera House. But just when his work is almost finished, the Prussians invade and the construction work is halted, and Eric, finally sick and tired of the human race, hides down in the cellars and constructs his own underworld home. So, so far, so good. I think everything up to this point is great, but from here on it loses its way a little for me. I think it's because it's recounting the story that we already know, albeit from Eric's perspective and occasionally through Christine's diary, and while that does give us some interesting insight and additional information into the story, there are some parts that really suck. In particular, I think it's strange that Kay has paid such attention to detail in keeping all the backstory accurate to LaRue, that when we finally get to the story we already know, she changes key scenes around. Like in the book, we know the chandelier falls right after Carlotta croaks like a toad. 
But in the K-book, The Fall is much later on at a different performance. The unmasking scene is nothing like in the book. And while the book described the music of Don Juan Triumphant as being like this great magnificent sob, the ultimate expression of grief and rage, in Kay's book, the music is just so sexy that Christine um, sort of gets herself off to it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and uh, just to add to the suckage, guess who Christine looks like? That's right, Eric's mother. Just like in the Charles Dance version. But why would that be a good thing? Eric hates his mother in the book, so wouldn't that be off-putting to him? Why do they keep overcomplicating the Eric-Christine relationship? It doesn't need it. And the last few chapters suck as well, but I won't spoil the ending for you, but it does go into the realms of fan fiction a bit. But all that said, it's still a very entertaining, well-researched, and well-written book. And if I was being exiled to a desert island and I had the choice of only one phantom book, K or Aru, I'd go with the K book. So now we've got the good books out of the way, let's take a look at Phantom of Manhattan. Oh no!